What's up, everyone? Welcome to Flock Small and episode four of our timing chart series. In this episode, we are finally getting into step three of the timing chart, which is the play, use, and discard cards step. This is essentially the bulk of a Keyforge turn and the bulk of playing Keyforge. You make a lot of your planning in the last step when you're choosing a house, but this is where rubber hits the road, cards start leaving your hand, and you're actually doing things. And so we're going to spend the bulk of the rest of this series in this step looking at all the different sub steps the different things you're doing both in playing and using cards and all of the interactions that are caused by doing that so things like destroyed effects damage fighting how all of those things work what the timing is of those and how you can use them to your best advantage okay. step three of our timing chart is going to be the play discard and use card step again there's a lot of sub steps and each of those kind of have their own sub steps so we're going to break this into several videos and to start with, we're looking at playing cards. But before we look at that, there's a very important clause, kind of like we've had in some of the other ones, that says you may perform these actions in any order and repeat them any number of times. You are not constrained to certain phases of the game where you can play cards and then other phases where you use them. You can make essentially any decision on your turn at any point as long as something is not in the middle of resolving. Let's take a look at the playing card step. Again, this is the first step in our larger step three. This is how you get cards into the game. Once you've started your turn, once you've chosen your house, how do you actually play a card? Well, you've got four sub steps here. Play, uh, number one, your card is a creature, artifact, or upgrade. Add it to your play area, resolving any enters play effects. And if your card is an action, reveal it. Step two, we got the bonus icon. So resolve each bonus icon on the played card, top to bottom. We're gonna take a look at what the bonus icons are. These are essentially just extra value to the card to help balance the game, but also just to make sure the game is moving forward. Step three, resolve your play, after play, and uh, after enters play effects. So this one and the enters play effects, we're actually gonna look at in second video because there's a ton more nuance there i want to be able to spend time on that number four if your card is an action place it in your discard pile again you have now resolved all of your play enters play all of that from the action card everything else moves off the board if there was stuff affected by the action card and then the action card goes in your discard for the most part this hasn't been a big deal but moving forward we do need to get that muscle memory to make sure that that action card is going in the correct place in your discard pile begin with this step we need to look at card types so there are four basic card types in keyforge creatures to begin with are exactly what they sound you're going to have sort of a battle line of creatures in front of you as you're playing them and using them they are different monsters humans aliens just about anything you can think of they are just the sort of workhorse of your deck the um units that are reaping fighting kind of performing actions on your behalf in a sense then you have artifacts. Artifacts are sort of, you know, special artifacts, uh, locations or different things that sort of warp the game. They have a lot of uh, persistent effects that will kind of just sit on the board and do things or passive effects. Some of them will also have very strong actions that you can use sort of like you would use a creature. The difference is uh, artifacts can't reap or fight or anything. They can really only do what is on their printed text. Upgrades are exactly what they sound like. They are an upgrade that can go on creatures. They can only go on creatures at the moment. And uh, they give text to the creature most of the time, either good or bad. Some of it is passive. Some of it gives them extra actions that they can do. Some of them are just giving them extra power. Whatever it is, it is a essentially a buff or a um, debuff to a creature that has to attach to a creature. Last card type is actions. These are sort of you as an archon, as a player, getting to directly influence what's going on the board. Instead of using your creatures and artifacts to do that, you can do things that are sort of going to have a direct impact. So whether it's stealing amber, destroying creatures, uh, drawing cards, whatever, these are all very strong, usually um, just single action effects that when you play it, you resolve whatever the effect is, and then it goes straight to your discard. They don't really create anything permanent most of the time on the board they just are a special one-off that um, has a big effect uh, all of these cards might have what are called pips pips are a, another part of the game for the first three sets the only pips that existed were amber but in general you're going to see these all over the place and then starting in mass mutation and on we had the introduction of enhancement pip these pips include capture pips damage pips 
draw pips. And then with the new Grim Reminder set coming out, we have the introduction of a fifth pip, which is a discard pip. And we're going to look at all of these in our example. But essentially, these are, you can almost think of these as sort of the baseline play effect for any card. Sort of this passive income for you of value, even if the card itself doesn't really do anything. Pips are a really awesome part of the game. They're very unique to Keyforge, and um, we need to see how they work in timing. So let's get into these examples, and we'll go from there. We're going to keep it very simple to start, just going through the basic four basic uh, card types and go through what it looks like to play those. Um, we talked in our other video about house choice and how on your turn you can only play cards you can only use cards of a specific house we're going to ignore that for this video so i'm going to play sorry and star alliance cards in the same turn can't normally do that unless a card lets you uh but just for this video for the ease of discussion we're going to do that got our hand here we've got kind of our different card types we're just going to start with a creature i've got mutagenesis researcher here a three power star alliance creature uh, important note on this one, I said I wasn't going to talk about text, but this one has an important one because we're going to look at enhancement pips. This is one of the cards that actually produces enhancements in your deck. And this is what the text looks like when it has that. It has enhance with amber capture, damage, and draw. And it says these icons have already been added to the cards in your deck. So when you see a card with that text, even though it looks like it might be doing something, once the deck is generated and those pips are placed on cards, this text is essentially blank. So this creature has already done its work before the game has started. It has done its enhancing of the deck, and it's now a vanilla creature. Now, there are plenty of enhance creatures that we would call these that do have other effects. They do do other things in the game. This one gives a lot of pips, and so it's kind of fine that it is just a three power body after it has done that. It's still not bad. but just a quick note there on how enhancements get into your deck and what the creatures look like that do that because it's very easy to see that block of text and think oh this creature is doing something with these pips it's already done it it's done that in the generation of your deck so you don't need to worry about that as far as playing creatures i have this battle line here of my two creatures and then my opponent has their creatures up here when you play a creature you're essentially just going to say i'm playing mutagenesis researcher Creatures must always enter the battlefield, one, exhausted, which means they are not going to be usable that turn, so they're going to be kind of tapped like this or however you want to do it, and they must come in on the flank of your battle line. So we don't have lanes like other games, and ordering does actually matter. Positioning does actually matter. So when you play a creature, it must enter the battlefield on one of the two empty sides of your board. So I can play it here, or I can play it here. I cannot play it here, unless the card has an ability that lets you, which is called deploy. This one does not. So I have to play it on one of these sides. In some decks, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. In some matchups, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. In some decks and some matchups, it makes a huge difference of sequencing of playing your creatures what is on what flank what their powers are and all of that so you really want to be careful of that especially when we get into later cards like taunt which are going to be protecting the two creatures next to them um we're not going to get too much into neighbors and all of those things because there's a whole lot of nuance there just remember you have your two flanks which are the left and right side kind of the ends of your battle line whatever creature is on your left and right are considered to be flank creatures uh, and then you also have a center of your battle line if you have an odd number of creatures. Now, one more important thing to note, if you only have one creature on the board, it is considered to be on the flank and in the center at the same time. You can still play it because you are still technically playing it on a flank. So we've just played our creature. That's basically it. It doesn't have a play effect. It doesn't have any pips. It just enters play exhausted like this one does on one of my flanks and you're good to go look at actions uh we've got hadron collision here it says play remove a ward from a creature and deal three damage to it damage cannot be prevented by armor pretty much all action cards just kind of look like this where they have you know no other things on them they don't have a power or anything they just say play playing actions is a little bit tricky because the action itself doesn't necessarily enter play but it also doesn't enter your discard until the play effect has resolved. So 
You can do this a little bit of different ways in terms of what it actually looks like when you're playing in person, because a lot of times it doesn't matter a whole lot. But with Grim Reminders especially, the order of your discard really does matter. So you want to make sure you're getting the muscle memory of this now so you don't have to kind of relearn later. But to play an action card, it's very similar to what we said with the creature. You're just going to kind of declare, I am playing Hadron Collision, this action card. And I usually like to take my action cards and kind of put them off to the side over here somewhere. So it's kind of uh, in view of both players. Let's put it over here because we've got some glare. It's in view of both players, but my hand is now free to kind of do what it needs to to resolve the action. But it's also not part of my flank. I don't need to have creatures. I don't have to like put it anywhere specific. It just can't go in the discard until the play effect is resolved. So in this case, it says remove a word from a creature and deal three damage to it. So I can deal three damage to a creature. Uh, that damage could destroy that creature depending on which I hit. If I just hit my opponent's creature like this Sniffle Ape, that just gets discarded. And then Hadron Collision has fully resolved, so it goes to my discard. Let's look at it if I target something else. And this is where a lot of the strategy gets a lot more interesting. We're not going to talk about the strategy here because I don't think there is a specific strategy to this, but there is a scenario or plenty of scenarios where you might want to hit one of your own creatures. And in that case, see, I play this Hadron Collision and I hit my own Gamgee. The Gamgee goes to the discard first and then the Hadron Collision goes there because it go doesn't go into the discard until it fully resolves. Again, with Hadron Collision, it's not super important. You're just moving a creature. You might not even be moving a creature if it only th deals three damage and doesn't kill it. But it is very important to kind of get that sequencing down. Again, we're doing a timing chart. This is how the timing of this works. It is a little bit awkward that this doesn't necessarily have a specified zone where it is when it is resolving. Just remember does not enter your discard until it is fully resolved and a lot of other things might happen before it it is fully resolved we'll get into that especially with destroyed effects later for now just remember that okay that's actions and creatures let's get to upgrades um upgrades fairly often are going to have an amber pip we'll go over pips in the next section here but for now upgrades are pretty much like playing actions but instead of going to the discard they attach to a creature and what is really important about that is there must be a creature in play to play an upgrade this is really important when we talk about pips especially because you might have a lot of enhanced pips on an upgrade you can't even attempt to get those pips unless there's a creature on board so playing an upgrade i'm just gonna say i'm playing a siren horn and i'm gonna attach it to one of my creatures Pretty straightforward you're just gonna slide it kind of has the text up at the top here so you can kind of uh format it a little bit like this where you have the text of the upgrade kind of sitting above the creature i would get my amber pip for playing it and now this creature has an added ability from that upgrade pretty straightforward for those a creature may have as many upgrades as you want to put on it um not all upgrades are good so the other option with this is I could actually put it on my opponent's creature. Upgrades are otherwise fairly straightforward. You're just going to pick a creature, stick it on that creature, resolve any pips, and you're done. Important thing to note about that. It is considered attached to the creature before the pips resolve. Then you resolve the pips, and then if there's any play effects or anything like that, do that. It's important because, again, you have to have a creature to attach it to in order to play it. Last one is artifacts. Artifacts are probably the simplest because they're like creatures, only they don't have flanks or anything like that. Play an artifact, you're just gonna play it somewhere below your battle line of creatures. It doesn't have to be on a flank or anything. You can kind of like stack them if you have a couple of the same kind, uh, kind of like you would mana in magic or something like that. They are just sort of in this other area um left right doesn't matter center doesn't matter they come in exhausted unless they say otherwise um so you can't use them on that turn otherwise it's just like playing a creature you're just gonna say i'm playing imperial road comes down exhausted you've played an artifact all right so now let's take a look at enhancements so again we have to follow all the normal rules we just talked about as far as when 
and where cards have to be played, how you have to play them, things like upgrades have to have creatures, etc. Otherwise, you just play the cards as they are, but as soon as they are in place on the board, so as soon as creatures enter your battle line, as soon as the artifacts enter down here, as soon as an upgrade is attached, the first thing that happens is the pips resolve. They resolve top to bottom if there's more than one, but they resolve before any other text on that card essentially is resolved unless it is an enters play uh, restriction. So start with creature. I'm going to play this demo alien that has this amber pip on it. Very straightforward. This demo alien doesn't normally have that pip on it. It's been enhanced to have that. When I play it, it enters the battle line, comes in exhausted. As soon as it hits the board like this, I gain one amber. Okay, so now let's look at the next one, which is going to be this Francis the Economist with a capture pip on it. Capture pip is a little bit different than capture on creatures as far as effects. Capture pip on a creature means I capture one amber from my opponent and I can place that on any of my creatures. You can't put it on your opponent's creatures, but it does not have to go on the creature that has the enhanced pip. But if you don't have any creatures in play, and this is the only one you're playing with that, you can capture on this creature because, again, this creature is already in place in the battle line before these pips start resolving. So this guy has a capture pip. I'm just going to go ahead and put it there. This guy's out. Next one is going to be Mutagenesis Researcher with a draw pip. Uh, we've already seen this creature, but this one is different. It is enhanced with a draw pip. As soon as that hits the board, I have to play it on one of my flanks comes in exhausted drop it i draw the top card of my deck now you know you get to play more cards if you draw another star alliance card stuff like that next one is going to be an action that is enhanced it actually has multiple enhancements so let's take a look at this and that is a spoils of battle with an amber that amber is natural it is always on there for this card but below that there's a red damage pip that damage pip is not normally there so how this would work again your actions kind of go somewhere out of the way, but still in a place where you can kind of go through resolving before it enters your discard. Amber pip happens first. I will gain an amber. And then the damage pip happens. Damage pips is essentially just placing one damage on one creature or dealing one damage to one creature. Um, it can be your own creatures. It can be opponent's creatures. It's just one damage. I'm going to go ahead and put it on this pen pack of Yaga. And then once this card is resolved, goes to my discard. Those are the four primary pips. Again, in Groom Reminders, there's also the discard pip. Uh, to avoid spoilers, we're not going to look at that as far as what the pip actually looks like on a card. But essentially, you can say if this Sandhopper had one of those pips, it's kind of a purple uh, card logo with a minus on it, similar to this blue draw card. It's a purple minus, so you're losing a card. When I do that with one of these pips, we get around a very important restriction that we're going to talk about later in discarding cards. Again, on your turn, once you've chosen a house, you can only discard cards of the chosen house. A discard pip gets around that rule. You resolve a discard pip, you can discard any card from your hand. So in this case, I'll go ahead and discard this lucky dice. That's how that would work. Okay. For this last example, we're going to give my opponent one amber here. Bring the board up a little bit. We're going to talk about pips resolving before other effects. And this can, <laughs> Rad Penny is kind of a repeat offender of this. There's a few different ways where this can be good or bad for you. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and play this Rad Penny capture pip. Now, Rad Penny says, play, steal one. My opponent only has one amber. So, in my mind, I really want to steal one because stealing is much better than capturing. You get to basically take one of your opponent's amber and put it in your pool. But pips must resolve before the play effects happen. The card is already in place. It is on the board, so I can capture that on this Rad Penny if I want to. But I don't get to steal because now my opponent is out of amber because of this capture pip. So there are situations where based on whatever the play effect is or whatever of the card, actually have bad pips. Um, 
pretty rare, but it definitely does happen. You might have things like capture pips on board clears where you know you're destroying all of your own creatures, so those capture pips aren't doing anything. With a card like Rad Penny, if there's no other cards on the board and it has a damage pip on it, it actually has to destroy itself before that play effect happens. And we'll get into the timing chart of that again uh, later, but that is something to note again. Pips on the card from enhancements happen before your play effects do. So go ahead and capture that there. And that's essentially it. Those are our enhancements. Let's close it out. All right. So there you go. We've done kind of half of our playing card step. Again, we've glossed over the enter play because that's a little bit more of a, a tricky one, but also not super common. Uh, so next time we're going to look at that. And then also really the big impact of playing cards, which is play effects after play effects and after enters play. Bear with me in that one because there is a lot of nuance. There's a lot of interesting things going on there. There's a lot of power, but also a lot of things that can really trip you up. So we'll do as best as we can in here. But at this point, you should know, or at least be confident of where cards go, how they leave your hand and begin to affect the board. Thanks for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Please share with anyone who is continuing to learn this game and discover it. And we'll see you next time.